Well, let's have a little chat about guards. This is, of course, a topic that I've talked about previously, but I realized that I failed to address a certain bias. So every martial artist has their own bias when it comes to weapons, fighting, and all of that. And just like people without martial arts background also have a certain way to look at things, uh, certain preconceived notions that they got from seeing martial artists in action, seeing movies and video games and all of that. So, and everybody evaluates weapons based on their background, of course. But sometimes that can lead to inaccurate conclusions, such as when people like myself, and it's pretty common in the HEMA community, criticize swords with a very small guard or no guard at all, as if the fact that they have a minimal guard is inferior, you know, disadvan a disadvantage. And from the HEMA perspective, historical European martial arts, it is indeed an, a disadvantage. If you're, if you're expecting to fight with longsword techniques, then the cross guard is very, very useful, and even more so later swords that have side rings and bars, complex hilts of various swords, um, even something as elaborate as the basket hilt that wraps around the entire hand and protects completely. That allows you to use other techniques than you would otherwise be able to. And of course, the martial art and the weapon that it uses, they both influence one another. The martial art is, you know, designed to fit the shape of the sword. The sword of the, the sword of the shape. The shape of the sword is designed to fit the martial art. They kind of cross pollinate, if you want to use a fancy term. So they influence each other. So it doesn't really make sense to, you know, take a medieval longsword fighting perspective and then talk about how this is inadequate. I mean, when I think about it, saying this is bad because it has an almost non-existent guard is like saying this is bad because I cannot do a krumpow with it because it doesn't have an edge there. So it doesn't really make sense. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, personally, I like double-edged swords and the additional options they give you because versatility is just something I appreciate. So I like to be able to cut both sides without actually having to, to rotate the wrist or requiring more space. And there are some techniques that work better that way that you can do very much up close in limited space. So there are some things that are very much, much like about it, but that doesn't mean that this is bad. It's just, it's used differently. And I'm sure there are some things that I'm personally overlooking that single-edged blades can do that double-edged blades cannot. I mean, obviously, you, you can strike an opponent's sword aside or, or parry with the spine without damaging the blade. You can still do that with a double-edged sword, but you risk damage, which you don't hear. So, and I'm pretty sure there are other things that I'm personally not aware of because, hey, I don't, I don't practice these styles. And as far as the cross guard is concerned, it also depends on the individual school, how much it's, it's focused on. Like, for example, uh, from what I've seen so far, Meyer relies a lot less on the cross guard than Lichtenauer does. Uh, Lichtenauer, according to some interpretations, and you always have to take, take things with a bit of a grain of salt because we always have to interpret the manual. Sometimes there are multiple plausible ways to perform a technique the way it's described and shown in pictures. And it's not always 100% clear, but uh, according to some interpretations, you're actually aiming towards catching the opponents, but like, like parrying actually with the cross guard. And you can also do things like hook the opponent's blade with the cross guard and then swipe it out of the way and then strike. So there are several ways to use that in which it com comes in handy. But at the same time, there are also other systems that don't place that much emphasis on it. Um, 
For example, generally I would say that if you were to try to use a sword like this with, you know, as if it was a long sword, that would <laughs> usually cause you some trouble. Again, depending on the school. But some of the basics still apply. If I, for example, take Meyer's um, retreating step, parry, counter, cut as, as you advance, you can apply that to this, not a problem. Uh, there are just some limitations compared to the longer blade. Like you have less reach, of course. And um, for example, if you try to use binding with this, yeah, that would be a problem. This is not meant for binding and winding. This is something that you do with a long sword. If you tried to do a bind, if, for, for those who don't know, when your opponent's blade, when your, your blade is in contact with your opponent's blade, and um, there are techniques like, for example, fühlen, which translates to feeling. So you would feel where the pressure is going. For example, if your opponent pushes in that direction, you would release and uh, cut to the other side. Things like that. That would not be a good idea with something like this, because then your opponent can just let the blade slide down onto your hand and cut it and you're done for. So there are, of course, certain limitations. Or, for example, if you try to apply Filipino sword techniques to a sword like this, that just wouldn't work very well, because this sword is meant to be used up close, very much toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and with quite different movements. The basics, of course, are the same. There are only so many ways in which you can cut and parry, but there are still substantially different tactics. And you don't need a guard to protect your, your hand against the opponent's blade because you, you're doing things you know, up close, you're, you're touching the opponent's arm and, and redirecting. So this is really only designed to prevent your hand from sliding up onto the blade as you thrust. Whereas with this sword, you just can't do that. This is designed to keep your opponent pretty far away from you. It's a very long blade. You just cannot go into super close quarters and, and try to use that, unless you use half sorting, of course. But this is just designed completely differently. And then, of course, it depends on whether or not you use a shield or buckler. If you do, then the guard doesn't matter, really, because this is your guard. With sword and buckler, as you cut, you move your shield to protect the hand. So you keep the hand, you know, behind the shield. So it's not endangered anyway. So a guard at that point is not a big deal at all. So yes, this is a mistake that I made myself to jump to conclusions based on your style and criticize other blades that are not designed for that style. And you see that a lot. It's, it's just easy to do because that's the way you think. And then you, you look at something else and you go, wait, that, I couldn't use that. Well, you couldn't, but someone else who has practiced something else doesn't have a problem with that apparent disadvantage. Personally, I've come to realize that even though I like this very much, I shouldn't act as if this was the be all end all and you know, dismiss other designs because they're not compatible with the way I practice. At the same time, of course, there are certain limitations. I cannot learn all martial arts on the planet to have the perfect objective image. So my opinion is still going to be somewhat slanted, of course, when I talk about swords. Like, for example, when I, when I talk about fantasy swords, you can always argue that, oh, well, but in that world, they have a completely different style of fighting that is different from anything that, that's ever been on Earth. So for them, it makes sense. Okay, whatever. <laughs> At that point, it's, it's kind of a, um, you know, beats everything by default argument and, and not non-falsifiable. But I hope this cleared things up a little bit. Um, I do make mistakes, of course, and when I do, I try to fix them or, or you know, at least point out that I did uh, when I've discovered them. Enough talk for now. Thanks for watching and have a good one.